So what I want to do, I want to tell you the family secrets. God tells Abraham to leave that system. Now what system am I talking about? The system of the other nations. And what system is God calling Abraham to? Abraham, I want you to listen to what you hear, not what you see, what I'm talking to you about. Abraham, I want you to, to listen to what I'm telling you, not what seems right to you, and I want you to go by what I desire and put aside your desires for what I desire. God tells Abraham, leave that system. That's all Genesis 12. And God is going to plant... We've seen how God reseeded the earth with Noah, but now God is going to plant Abraham's family right in the middle of all the other nations. And the land that that he's leading Abraham to has two major international highway routes that go all the other nations pass through that little property. He says, Abraham, go to the land I'll show you, and I'm going to give this to you and your descendants. I'm going to plant you there. God is growing a family tree from the seed of righteous Abraham. What kind of nation is he thinking he's going to get? There it is again. I want the earth to be a good place. And if you have good people, it's a good place. Through your seed, all the families of the earth will be blessed. It's just a tiny little nation with three little grandfather, father, uh, Isaac, and then the grandson, Jacob. We're going to look in Genesis chapter 29. Jacob is a twin. His brother was, I don't know if you could even say they were born seconds apart because Jacob was grabbing his twin brother's heel as they were being born. And he, the indication is that he was trying to get out first. (laughs) And that characterized their family. Jacob was always grabbing onto Esau's heel, trying to get first. And the benefits were, if you were firstborn, you got twice the inheritance allotment as your brother or whatever children. You got two portions. Jacob figured out, I really want that two portions, and I would love to get that. So he cheats his brother. He figures out a way to find something that Esau really wants, and he says, well, give me that birthright. Oh, sure, you can have it. Okay, now watch. When it's time for Isaac, when he thinks he's going to be passing away, so he's going to give the blessing, which is kind of like reading the will. Who's going to get the two portions? Jacob is supposed to get the two portions now because Esau gave it to him. Now you tell me, you, I just want to ask, I mean, you don't raise your hands or anything like this, but have you ever been part of a will with family, trying to work things out, and someone gets twice the amount? Like someone gets twice the inheritance things? Are there any sort of hurt feelings going on there? I just want to say that one of the family secrets in here is that these twin boys hate each other's guts because one of them outmaneuvered the other to get the family inheritance. And at this point in Jacob's life, it's about the money. And if you can just think of a family that there's just a lot of bickering over who got what, then you will understand this family. Jacob, actually, his father was blind at the time when he was giving the blessing or reading the will. He thought he was actually giving it to Esau. It was really Jacob dressed up in Esau's clothes. Of course, his father couldn't see, but he said, come here. And he gives him a hug and he's like, yep, smells like my son Esau. Esau says, I'm going to kill him. Now, I don't know what your relationship is like with your siblings, but if you had a twin that wanted to kill you, would you call this a happy family? This is a family where Jacob has to leave, and they whitewash it. They say, you know what? You're not married yet. Uh, Esau was already married by this time. Jacob, you're not married yet. We're going to send you back to the old family homestead far away, and you're going to find yourself a wife. It's really because, why? His brother hates his guts because he maneuvered the money. Jacob runs away, but uh, what we have, and you can just write this out on your envelope next to Jacob. He cheated, he deceived, and his brother wants to kill him. The place where he runs, he finds his relatives. That's where his mother had grown up. His mother's folks had grown up there. And that's where we come into the story in Genesis chapter 29, verse 6. He says to the shepherds of Laban. Do you know Laban? That's his 
relative, and he says, yeah, here's Rachel, his daughter, coming with the sheep. And he sees Rachel coming. Look in verse 9. While he was still speaking with them, these other shepherds, Rachel came with her father's sheep. She was a shepherdess. And when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, look at his reaction. He just steps in as the hero. Here she comes with all these sheep, and he just, he falls in love with her. It's love at first sight. And he wants to marry her. He makes the arrangement with her father that he would work for seven years for her. I mean, that was the dowry that he was willing to pay for her. And it says that the time just went like that because he just could not wait to get married to Rachel. The night of his wedding, Rachel's father pulled a fast one because he put her older sister in the tent with Jacob instead of Rachel. When Jacob woke up in the morning, he had a different wife. And you see what he had done to his dad. When he switched and, and, oh, it's, no, I'm Esau, I'm Esau. You see it coming back around? Now he's married to a woman that he doesn't really love. Okay, so you think of what that's like. Is this a happy family from the get-go? This is not a good sign. And in fact, he is still in love, but who's he in love with? The younger sister. It indicates that, like, Rachel's really beautiful and Leah is not. It's kind of like her dad was like, How are we going to get her married? Oh, I have this idea to get her married. If you were Leah, can I just ask, I mean, how would you be feeling? You can imagine in this family when there's one person that's very beautiful and one daughter who's not, you tell me what the relationship is like between the two sisters. Not very good. Do You see, Jacob is coming from a family where his brother hates his guts and wants to kill him. And Leah and Rachel have this thing going on, and now Jacob is married. So when Jacob gets the older sister, and he is so angry at his father-in-law. Now, there's some problems right there, if you're starting off so angry at the father-in-law. He says, I worked for Rachel. He says, ah, didn't I tell you we have a custom here? We always marry the older sister first. How did I fail to mention that in the seven years that you've been working for me? (laughs) He says, okay, I'll tell you what. You can have Rachel in a week. Finish off your wedding week with Leah. You can have Rachel in a week, but you have to work for her another seven years. I'll give her to you on credit for another seven years. And with the two daughters, they also, like if a woman was not able to have children, included in the dowry was often a servant that would act as a surrogate mother. And so Rachel came with her servant, Bilhah, and Leah was given Zilpah. Came with the whole bargain. Within one week, Jacob went from being an unmarried man to having four wives. Two wives and their servant girls, concubines. So they didn't have the full status as wives, but they came with the package deal. Now, if you, and I I don't want to make this an exact parallel. It's not an exact parallel. But if you had a, a family where someone, a man married a woman that he didn't love and then and then got rid of her and married her sister that was beautiful, that he loved. He had children by the first wife and then they tried to have a blended family. Do you see any problems emerging? It just goes very quickly through the list. Leah starts having boys. She has four boys. Boom, 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 boom. And after the second or third boy, you know what she says? My husband is going to love me now. Because he has four boys. What man does not want boys to carry on his name? He is going to love me. You know what the truth was? Jacob didn't love her. Didn't matter how many kids she had. Well, you can imagine Rachel over there, the younger sister, the beautiful younger sister, who sees her older sister having kids with her husband. That Now, this is a polygamy system, so it, it's not an exact thing, but you can understand this feeling of animosity going on in this family. Rachel says, well, I'm not, ha- I'm not obviously able to have children, so you take my servant girl, Bilhah. So Bilhah has Dan and Naphtali. And Leah had stopped having children, and so she's like, two can play that game. Here's my servant girl, and we have Gad and Asher are born after that. Well, then Leah has a girl, Dinah. 
the one girl in the bunch. And then she has two more boys, Issachar and Zebulun. Leah now has six boys and a girl, and Jacob now has ten children. And the wife he loves more than anyone has none. So she's dealing with what whole issue? I can't have kids. How come I can't have kids? How come you have kids with all of those women, but you don't have children with me? Is this a happy family? In fact, if you just you could use one word to describe this family, what would you say? This family is so dysfunctional and is a mess. Now, I want you to look at that phrase at the very bottom of the page there. Through your seed. This is what was promised to Abraham. This righteous man who believes God. Through your seed, your family, all the families of the earth. That's the packet we're not looking at right now. All of the families. Now, they're just going their own way. So whatever is bad in this family, these families are even further away. This is the good family. This is the righteous family. They've got some serious problems. Well, finally, it says, The Lord heard Rachel. She has a little boy. And Jacob could not have been happier. He was the delight of Jacob's eye. I don't think the other sons, well, I know that he loved them too. But compared to Joseph, now, I don't know how your families operate or the families that you were born into or, or what your history is, but when there's favoritism and it's obvious that one child seems to just get it all, you know what happens? And not only that, but look where the mothers, look which mothers they came from. All those other boys, they came from Leah and then the two, the two concubines. So you see that where the real competition is going to be on that top row right there because Joseph is a firstborn just like Reuben see the two firstborns and then much later little Ben is born Benjamin I didn't have room to spell his whole name out so I'm just calling him little Ben (laughs) and little Ben is born and Rachel dies in childbirth so you have how many issues going on and Jacob has lost his favorite wife, and look what he's left with. Twelve sons, these wives, these other three, and the relationship between them is bad. Now we're going to look into the skeletons in the envelope (laughs) because they do have some skeletons. You thought we got the skeletons out of the envelope. These are not the skeletons. This is the backdrop for some of the skeletons in the envelope. 